Hi friends, we're continuing on part two of our discussion of borderline personality disorder. And I'll start with a disclaimer. I am not a medical doctor and I'm not trying to make any type of diagnosis what the Lord has put on my heart and which has gotten such great reviews. Thank you for all your comments and all your questions. Um, I did not realize this was going to be such a helpful topic for so many people. I mean, the Lord said so, but I didn't realize actually, and it's been great. So God is going to help deliver so many people, and I'm excited to be a part of that. So the disclaimer is that I'm not making any diagnosis or any, um, any claims about being a doctor. I'm just explaining what I've witnessed and what I've researched but I've been around so that we can help people. The word of God is the answer to everything. We have to acknowledge what's going on. We don't have to have terms, but we need to acknowledge. So let's start with a story. This would be an example of a borderline parent in a situation that most dads or, dads or moms would react to with just an easy hug. Mom and child are walking on the sidewalk. Child falls. Mom erupts in fury. How could you fall like that here where everyone can see you? You are making me look bad. The child's concerns would be irrelevant. The mother's reaction to the incident would be all about mom. All right, so I know it sounds crazy, but I hope not many have witnessed this situation like this, but most have actually, sadly. And it's not just one time, it's, it's a pattern of this behavior. And it's a pattern that the person who's doing it doesn't even realize, most likely. So today we're going to continue to describe this situation. And I really, um, you know, I'm thinking about children who are still teens, who can listen to this, or even in their 20s that, you know, or even older that have relationships with their parents. But you know, and they experienced this, or they currently experience this. My heart goes out to you, but I'm going to read from Psychology MS. No child should be afraid of their parent, and if they are, it's an issue that needs to be addressed. Children are so precious, though at times can be handfuls. They do not just have unrational fears about their parents or close family members. This is a quote because if a child under age 18 is saying they're at some point they were afraid of their parents, they were afraid. It's not a joke and it's not something to be dismissed as irrelevant. It's a very serious issue. Now, if, if years have gone past, that's fine. We're not reliving the past, but the thing is the damage was done. Emotional abuse, that was emotional abuse and the damage is done, but the good news is that the word of God frees us. It frees us from everything. So what we're doing last time and this time are just explaining what it is, and then we're gonna move on to the next topic of those that were, um, that were harmed or felt suffered, and then we're gonna go on after that into solutions because the medical community doesn't have many solutions other than cognitive therapy, and um, that takes a willing person to acknowledge what they're what we're even talking about and in the past most did not so um what this is about is explaining it not pointing fingers to who we think has it and who doesn't but to um to simply learn how to uh heal from any of these wounds so um august 8th of 2011 psychology today did an article and i'm just going to go over this is continuing to talk about what we're looking for and to help people. So BPD is a mental illness that wreaks havoc and causes tremendous private pain in the lives of the one affected and all the interpersonal relationships they want and attempt to have. It is said to be more prevalent in women. What do people with BPD do? They often exhibit inappropriate anger and sudden mood swings. They are black or white in their thinking there is no gradient of gray that most of us understand and allow for in others. Borderlines do not know how to moderate 
or allow others to do so. They have tendencies to rage at the most harmless of comments. They act out, they're impulsive, they have repeat chaotic interpersonal relationships, pushing friends away, pushing people away in general. They have major trust issues and repeatedly false, falsely accused close family members or loved ones. They accuse them of things that aren't even being done, which would be like lying or making up stories, but in their mind that they think it's really happening, but it's not. They react before they reason and with that impulsivity, all chaos abruptly breaks loose, disrupting people's lives, family gatherings, just a simple drive to the store, a simple movie or board games. This is just what we're looking for. And I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes, so I'm going to um, just keep going here. So today we're going to address children or yeah, children who, um, they're probably teens now, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and any other adult who remembers a tumultuous childhood and hasn't really realized why, haven't uncovered it, knew something was going on but didn't understand what. It goes without explaining that children growing up, growing up with a borderline mom or dad, usually moms, exact, for example, will want to listen to these items. So I'm just gonna list, this was from another, um, a group, a, a specialist group and psychologist. All right, so emotional abuse of a child is any pattern of behavior by parents or caregivers that can seriously interfere with a child's cognitive, which is thinking, emotional, psychological, or social development. You know, I'm gonna add right here, anything that helps, that steals one's identity. We are all born with knowing nothing, but we're, we're great. What we are around will either produce fears or confidence. When we get out into the world, it does the same. But in our home or wherever we are, whoever's our caretaker, it's supposed to be, which is, I know Satan is in this world, but it's supposed to be an environment of um, appreciation, uh, respect. Let me just read these points so I can get off here. So it's, this is a pattern of a parent or caregiver that, so if you know, realize any of these things, this is you, you'll be learning that's what happened in your, so that you can determine how you can work on your own self-esteem and your inner love for yourself with the word of God. So ignoring the parent or caregiver fails to respond to the child. Now, that doesn't mean when the child's calling 5,000 times, like, you know, and the other, mom, 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 ignore it. That's not, fails to respond to the child means if a child really wants, old enough to make some decisions and really wants to do something and it's not taken into account. Or if a child shares something that they really wanted to do, they don't get to do it, but then their sibling does. Older or younger, it doesn't matter. Rejecting, any actual refusal to respond to a child's needs. Rejecting doesn't just necessarily mean rejecting putting clothes on their back. That's an obvious abuse. Borderline is very sneaky, hardly anybody knows, and it's always covered up by the one doing it because they don't think they have the problem. So it's any refusal to respond to a child's needs. Isolating, the parent or caregiver consistently makes a big deal and prevents the child from having normal social interactions with whom they feel comfortable and it's a safe option. Peers, family members, adults. When there is consistent division and isolation, there's something wrong there. You know, obviously, within boundaries. We wanna make sure that we, I don't know what everyone knows what I'm saying. Exploiting or corrupting. During this kind of abuse, the child is taught, encouraged, or forced to develop inappropriate or illegal behaviors. Okay, obviously, I didn't de deal with anyone that had illegal behaviors, um, develop inappropriate, you know, it's just, Encouraging child, children to do the wrong type, the wrong thinking, the wrong thought process. If a, if, a, if a borderline parent has trust issues, 
they're going to pass on trust issues to the children. It's just, or the spouse or whatever. It's just, so it's all, it's all corrupt thinking and selfish thinking. Verbally assaulting. This includes constantly belittling, which is criticizing, shaming, not lifting someone up, just shaming them for any mistake, ridiculing, or verbally threatening the child, terrorizing, threatening or bullying the child, and creating a climate of fear for the child. That would probably be the, the number one thing that I've seen over the years in talking with people. I'm not saying fear like um, we talk about this on the broadcast all the time. Fear is doubt, worry, unbelief. But this main thing I'm talking about is being scared of every little thing, every sound, every situation, that is terrorizing. And then the last thing is neglect. Neglecting. Neglect may include educational neglect, mental neglect, medical neglect, where a parent or caregiver denies or ignores a child's needs for treatment or whatever they need. So, again, I'm going to close up on this point. What we're not, we have to acknowledge the challenge. This is not about talking about the abuser or the one who's doing these things we are talking about helping people get free and the only way to get free is the word of god and we're going to talk about it next time we should start with um with the fear and with the problem and solution and then continue on because it's of time we're going to go now and we'll see you soon we're putting these on youtube on our king road live channel and also on the instagram tv channel so have a great rest of the day and we'll see you soon